Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chetan Singh Solanki. I'm faculty at Department of Energy, Science and Engineering. And uh, uh, I have done my PhD in solar energy technologies uh, way back uh, in 2004. So last 15 years, I'm working on this technology. And uh, you know, I have been uh, trained to uh, develop the technology on solar cell. What also we are doing at IIT Bombay is I'm heading what is called NCPRE, which you people visited, National Center for Photovoltaic Research and Education, where we are really uh, kind of researching on the very fundamental aspects of the materials, uh, solar cell design, fabrication of solar cell, module, uh, reliability of modules, power electronics, whatever under the sun that you need to know from right from the material till the uh, integration with the uh, generation of power and integration with the grid, everything we are doing it. But as I said, what I am not going to talk to you is about technology. A lot of us actually develop a really wonderful technologies, but not every technology reaches to the people. And therefore, this experience that I am going to share with you, uh, with my colleague, uh, Professor Jendran, we have been working on this project together uh, for many years now, uh, is an example of how that can be done. All right, so the project is called Solar Urja Lamp Project, you know, Sol, and it is really touching to the souls of millions and millions of students. Uh, so, Solar Urja Lamp is actually the lamp uh, is for the study purpose. But before that, let me give you the background uh, that there are 17 sustainable development goals. You might be aware about it. One of the goals, that is goal number seven, uh, is a very important goal. What it says is ensure access to affordable, reliable, sustainable and modern energy for all. Uh, it is about energy, but it touches every other sustainable development goal, whether it is about the poverty, uh, uh, whether it is about literacy, GDP, uh, income, empowerment, uh, or even climate change. Everything has a relationship with uh, this goal number seven. So basically, I wanted to tell in 2017, what was the status of the world, you know? One billion people still did not have access to electricity. One billion is almost 13, 14 percent of the world population. 2.8 billion people did not have access to clean cooking, 40 percent of the world population. So they would be using biomass, cow dung, wood, coal kind of things, you know. Can you imagine the scenario that we are in the modern, the most modern uh, world and uh, we have all kind of technologies reaching to the moon and Mars and whatnot, but 40 percent of the people in the world still do not have access to clean cooking. The worst problem is <coughs> use of energy is also affecting the climate change. So whatever action that we do using energy, it is affecting the climate change. And we need energy because energy drives our growth. But on the other hand, energy is also resulting in the climate change. So these are the two opposite ends of the problem. Also, for Indian uh, perspective particularly, but actually not only India's perspective, many countries are passing through the phase that they are most of the population is very young, almost 30 percent people in India are, are very young. We need a lot of energy, you know, there is a population growth that requires energy, there is a GDP growth that requires more and more energy. And India also imports a lot of energy from outside by the way, you know, we are one of the biggest importer of coal, we import oil, we import gas, we import uh, you know, uh, nuclear fuel, all kind of things. <clears throat> the current per unit capita electricity consumption is almost about 1000 units. And if you go by the average of the world that is about 3500 units, you need 800,000 megawatt of power plant capacity in India. Right now, we are about 350,000 megawatt. So again, huge capacity addition is required. Why I'm putting this context? Because you should understand that this path, if you continue to walk on this path, you know, it is not really going to give you sustainable solution. Why uh, uh, this lamp, which I'm going to talk about, is very important because uh, the education is, is very enabler, a great enabler in every country. And uh, uh, in India, particularly, Lot of students in a rural area, almost more than 70 percent. And if you look at the, the number of enrollment of the students in the urban area and a rural area, you'll find that the drop out rates, I mean the, the curve is much steeper, the yellow one is much steeper for the, uh, the students from the rural area uh, as compared to the urban area. Now there can be many reasons for that, you know, there, you know uh, uh, access uh, to the school itself, the teacher, the quality, everything. But one of the reasons that is uh, that plays a role here is availability of electricity. Until unless the reliable electricity solutions are available to them, it doesn't work, the, the continuity of education is not there. So as a result of that, many countries around the world, what people do is provide them solar lamps. 
Why? Because solar lamps are very simple standalone device. You can uh, buy it and supply it and you can supply it in a very quick way. So if somebody really wants to provide a basic light, it can be done using solar lamp. And everybody has been doing it, right? In India or in, why India? Everywhere in the world. So if you look at the, uh, the first kind of solar lamp came in India in 1976. So it is almost more than a four decade that such a programs have been happening. But it was not very successful and that is where the innovation that we have done in terms of the technology, in terms of the operations, in terms of the materials, in terms of the uh, supply chain, everything is very important. That is what I am going to share with you. Uh, before that, uh, let me show you a small video uh, to put the whole thing in a context. कमान है ये जल का ईमान है ये हवाओं की जान है ये रूह की उड़ान है ये हो असली भारत गांव में बसता है एक वृक्ष को मजबूती देती है उसकी मजबूत जड़ें और भारत की मजबूती और समृद्धि के पीछे है हमारे गांव की गांधी जी ने कहा था कि भारत का भविष्य उसके गांव में छुपा है गांधी जी हम सभी में बसते हैं ग्रामीण क्षेत्रों से संबंधित अपने अपने रिसर्च प्रोजेक्ट्स के जरिए अनेक लोग देश के विकास में योगदान दे रहे हैं मेरे मन में हमेशा ये रहता था कि हम किस तरह से जो पढ़ाई की है जो टेक्नोलॉजी का अध्ययन किया है उसको हम किस तरह से उपयोग कर सकते हैं और बहुत सारे बच्चे जो गांव में रहते हैं जिन्हें पढ़ने के लिए शाम को लाइट की व्यवस्था नहीं हो पाती है यदि ऐसे बच्चों को हम सोलर ऊर्जा का उपयोग करके सोलर लैम्प का उपयोग करके बिजली की व्यवस्था कर सके उनकी पढ़ाई के लिए तो ये बहुत अच्छी बात होगी हमारा जो प्रोजेक्ट है मिलियन लाइट प्रोजेक्ट है उसमें हम 10 लाख बच्चों तक ये सोलर लैम्प पहुंचाने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं इस प्रोजेक्ट में खास करके हम गांव के लोगों को ही इन्वॉल्व कर रहे हैं जिसमें गांव के लोग ही लैम्प को बनाते हैं गांव के लोग ही लैम्प को वितरित करते हैं और गाँव के लोग ही लैम्प को रिपेयर और मेंटेनेंस का भी काम करते हैं रोशन है रात जिनसे हर कदम साथ जिनसे सौगात उम्मीद जिनसे उन्नत अभियान है ये ऑल राइट कुड यू नोटिस वॉट इज द सोल्यूशन सोल्यूशन इज ऑफकोर्स सोलर लैम्प बट द वे वी प्रोवाइड सोलर लैम्प इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड एज आई मैंशन दैट वट वी डू इज वी इन्वॉल्व लोकल कम्युनिटीज टू डू ईच एंड एवरी थिंग बट हाउ वी हैव कम टू दिस आइडिया I would like to share two kind of project which I did not work very well. You know, uh, one of the project that I started in 2008 and 9, Ekal Vidyalaya is at like one school teacher, and these are the very informal schools run in a very remote rural areas where children go to the field in the daytime and they could not access to the regular schools, so they actually uh, go to the schools in the evening. And when when I went first time to uh, this village and in middle of uh, somewhere, you know, we stopped and I said, you know, probably we lost the road. He said, "No, sir. The place where it's trending is actually road, so you could not even figure out uh, the ways to reaching of these villages. And there are many villages like that. I found it. What people used to do is study like this in kerosene lamp. And so this Ekal Vidyalaya is what people do. They will take the kerosene lamp. They will walk to the school. The school is very informal, as I said, in somebody's house. They gather together and uh, study in the kerosene. So what we have done is we have provided them a solar lamp. Now at that time." Uh, Uh, this lamp, as you can see here, is about five watt uh, CFL based lamp, and around twenty people, twenty five people could sit. And we got a sponsorship at that time, and we provided solar lamps to some five hundred villages. This went to uh, many places, so in UP, uh, in Madhya Pradesh, uh, even uh, this photo I think belongs to Tamil Nadu somewhere. So there are like it was very nicely distributed, and as every other solar lamp program, there was a lot of fun fair. Uh, that you know project implemented 500 villages so many students are using this one of the problem of uh, this kind of approach was that uh, the light was not reaching everywhere 
so we we did small experimentation why don't we put it you know above the ground then as soon as you put above the ground then you will have the shading problem that the base will actually shade the light everywhere else so then we said uh, why don't we uh, hang it upside down so what i have done is i have separated the base of the lamp these are very old photographs some have got access and then we connected another wire and the light was uh, hung on the on the top so in that way the distribution was better well this is some of the experiment that we did but uh, within 5 months 6 months 7 months the lamp uh, stopped functioning you know sometime the battery will not be charged fuse will not be working uh, or even if some people you know uh, tell us that you know my lamp is not working we couldn't do anything because uh, there is no way we could reach out to so many uh, different places at the same time i did another project as i said with the terry the light of billion lights project where uh, the whole model was little different what in this model was that you actually create a central charging station charge all your lamps at one place the user will actually pay the rent for using it so the user will come to the center uh, take the lamp in the evening the charge lamp use it overnight and then bring it back in the morning so that it can be charged again so i did three villages with this kind of model you know my village and the neighboring villages but uh, the after 5 6 month one year the it was same you know the lamp stopped working nobody would come to repair lamp was also expensive so people could not afford it so in 2012 so one of the problem that i identified is this uh, mechanism of buy and sell what everyone will do state government central government ngos those were those were running the program they would buy and sell as a result of that the product will become expensive why because you know somebody uh, will make it somebody will buy it then it will be transported second problem uh, i figured out that there is no technical support so many times the lamp is a very simple device and the problems that were with the lamp are very simple like sometimes the fuse will not be working so you need to change the fuse sometimes the soldering uh, point will you know uh, get off so you need to solder it again sometimes the uh, the battery will not be uh, properly charged so it's a very simple thing but as a result of this the products will actually fail uh, prematurely they will not work throughout the life and that is the case not only with the solar lamp but all kind of solar product it is same uh, same story the third problem is every time because we are buying and selling uh, the continuity is not there so if somebody is you know buying and providing 500 lamps if somebody wants to buy one more lamp 501 it is not available right as a result of that the solar solution never becomes uh, continuous uh, uh, availability is not there you understood everyone so this is a basic problem not only this technology i believe with every technology your mobile phones are working everywhere because you you find some guy who can actually give recharge of 10 rupees also you can find some guy who can actually repair your uh, phone in every corner so similar thing was required and not only required then we also found that even if there is electricity connection in the houses of people still solar lamp is required because when we are talking about study purpose for studying you need uh, about 150 lux of light and the lux is a as a, a unit of uh, light you measure how much lux is there so for example on your table you will have something like about 150 lux of light so that is kind of intensity that you need we measured this in various uh, uh, houses almost more than 2000 houses we measured this in various states like you know uh punjab uh, uh, haryana uh, up rajasthan maharashtra madhya pradesh what we found among 2000 household that majority of them will have the light level at a very very low what does it tell you that even if there is electricity there is not sufficient light on the on the book and in villages there is no table chair right so the distance between the light and the the floor will be higher the light will be typically hang uh, uh, in between the door uh, the two rooms so therefore it will be distributed to wider areas and another problem even if there is electricity connection the supply is not continuous you know so there is a fluctuation in voltage there is a fluctuation in the availability of the power voltage uh, the there is a power cuts all those kind of things will be happening so together first of all when there is no electricity we need a solution even if there is a full electricity 24 by 7 we need a solution and even if there is a partial electricity we need a solution but the solution should actually solve the problem of affordability availability and repairability so that is what our lamp came in picture that if you look at the needs of people and there are, there is a energy ladder so people need electricity or uh, energy for basic purpose lighting one you uh, know basic lighting like torch and the flashlight that you use 
once that is completed people would like to illuminate every room every house once that is there you would like to have fan you would like to have refrigerator tv then you would like to of course irrigate their farms and and then finally if more energy is available you will use it for the production purpose right? you you run some manufacturing you do some processing so this is the entire energy ladder that we needed to work but one of the most basic thing is providing them light for study purpose as i told you earlier that we wanted to solve this problem of access to the light so that everybody can study well now the three problems that i have told you we thought there could be a, a three solutions it's a solution included how do we find and make the product affordable how do we uh, uh, involve the local community and how do we saturate the uh, the area which we uh, with which we work by the way the program for 1 million uh, solar lamps you know that we thought we implemented from iit bombay 1 million is a big number by by any standard and we wanted to do in one year time so therefore uh, the speed of the whole operation the scale of the whole operation and the skill level that required uh, in the local community was uh, was very important aspect of it 